seeing her. President Biden holding a call with several world leaders earlier this morning on Ukraine. It comes after a rocky international trip that required several walkbacks by the White House. Let's bring in Tennessee Republican Senator Bill Haggerty is a member of the Foreign Relations Committee. So the president this morning was on the phone with Macron, Schultz, Draghi of Italy, as well as Boris Johnson. I assume this idea of him blurting out regime change yes. inadvertently over the weekend came up. Does the president need to check himself here? not ad-lib his way into official policy, which he then has to walk back? Uh, he, he certainly should, John. Very, very well put as well. Um, you know, I served as U.S. ambassador to Japan before becoming a United States senator. Our words matter, particularly in a diplomatic setting, particularly overseas. And President Biden needs to be very considerate and thoughtful about what he says, and not to find ourselves in a situation like this. In fact, what he's doing is also fueling the propaganda machine in Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, this is pushing Putin further into a corner. I don't think this is safe. It's dangerous. You know, it's one thing to articulate a policy when you mean it. It's another thing to articulate a policy <laughs> accidentally. Our, our Peter Ducey asked the president about that yesterday. Listen here. And I'm not walking anything back. The fact of the matter is I was expressing the more outrage I felt toward the way Putin is dealing and the actions of this man, just, just brutality of it. Half the children in Ukraine, I just come from being with those families. And, uh, and so, uh, but I want to make it clear, I wasn't then nor am I now articulating a policy change. I was expressing the moral outrage that I felt. What we later learned was that the president was actually reading off of a cheat sheet there. But if what he was saying was so clear, why did a number of administration officials, all the way up to the secretary of state, have to come out and say, no, regime change isn't our policy? And Emmanuel Macron was very critical of the president, saying you've got to be, you've got to be very careful that you don't push Putin here. You don't escal escalate the language. Yeah, it's, uh, again, it's just shocking to me to see this sort of behavior. I mean, I go back to the press conference, the second press conference, that President Biden had maybe five or six weeks ago. And there he, again, blurts out that maybe a minor incursion is something that we wouldn't respond to, in essence, inviting just such a thing to happen. So there, there needs to, as you go back to the words you originally used, John, to check himself, to realize that, that his statements matter. He's the leader of the United States, the leader of the free world. These words have consequences. You know, we had an interesting guest on with Martha McCallum yesterday. We've had him on our program as well, Jack Barsky. He was a former Soviet spy here in the United States who turned, started helping out the FBI, is now living in the United States. Uh, he said yesterday to Martha that you just can't walk stuff like this back. Listen here. You can walk that statement back a hundred times. It was out. Every time our president uh, makes a personal attack on Vladimir Putin, I cringe because Putin is paranoid. So you need to be tough with Putin because that's what he understands. But is feeding his paranoia the right thing to do? No, I think speaking from a position of American strength is always where we need to be coming from, John. But as you say, not off the cuff, not off, not, not offhand remarks, uh, not slipping up and walking it back with statements that clearly could feed paranoia. Very dangerous. Uh, so peace talks uh, were occurring today in Istanbul between Russia and Ukraine. There's some sense that Russia is not serious about this. But Ukraine did float a plan. Uh, which they said that they would be a neutral country, but they would want security guarantees. They would want security guarantees from members of the U.N. Security Council, the permanent members, the United States, Great Britain, France, China, Russian Federation, as well as maybe Turkey, Germany, Canada, Italy, Poland, and Israel. Is that something you think in your experience could fly? Well, I certainly understand Ukraine's desire to do this. I think President Zelensky has been very good about putting Ukraine's interests first. He's leading from a Ukraine first standpoint. After the Budapest Agreement, again signed by the United States, the UK, Russia, uh, they have every reason to be concerned and want to broaden any type of agreement, any type of security guarantees they could get. This is aggressive. I don't blame the, the president of Ukraine for asking for this at all. We'll see how it goes. One more question on a different topic. You met with Katanja Brown Jackson this morning, yes, did you did. not? Uh, you were a no on her confirmation to the D.C. Circuit. How do you feel after meeting her? Well, one of the things that I mentioned when I was running for this office is that one of the most significant decisions a United States senator can ever make is regarding a U.S. Supreme Court justice. So I had a very pleasant meeting with the judge this morning. Uh, I had an opportunity to dig into her judicial philosophy, how she will apply the law. I'm still working through that. Uh, she answered some of my questions, and I've got more to go. What are your concerns? I would really want to make certain that the law is applied as it's written, that we don't have judges that are stepping beyond the bounds of the law. I'm also concerned about judges' desire to pack the court, for example, or change the dynamics of, of the administration of the... Of the she uh, give you an answer in court packing? She would not answer yeah, that. I didn't think so. She would not answer that. All right. Senator Bill Hargitay of Great State of Tennessee, good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Sandra? You.